Hey guys, you've probably heard of the Bible story called the Parable of the Talents. Very interesting story. It goes a little like this. There was once a man, fairly wealthy. One day, he decides to go on a trip. He's gonna go away for a little while. But before he leaves, he calls on his three servants. To the first, he gives five talents. To the second, he gives two talents. And, he, and to the third, he gives one. The story says that he gave to each according to his ability. Then he leaves. The, surf, the first servant takes five talents, goes away, puts them to work, makes an additional five more talents. The second one does the same, goes out, doubles what he gets. The third, he does something completely different. He goes out, digs a hole, and buries his talent. The story goes on to say that after a long time, the master comes back and checks. He checks in with them. The first servant says, Lord, you gave me five talents. I went out, did my thing, made five more. The master says, well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much, much more. Enter into the joy of your master. The second servant goes, Lord, you gave me two talents. Here you go, sir. I made two more. The master says, good job. Pretty much tells them what he told the first servant. Now, the third servant steps forward, tells the master, Lord, you're a hard master. You reap what you sow. You reap, actually, you reap what you don't sow. And you gather where you haven't scattered any seed. I got afraid, and so I hid the talent in the ground. And here's how the master responds. You wicked and lazy servant. So you knew all that, and you still didn't do anything with the talent that I gave you? You didn't even put it in the bank for even a bare minimum return on my money? He then has a talent taken from him and throws him out of his presence. Again, very interesting story. Let's break it down a little bit. First, it's a little weird, right? It's a little weird. They receive different amounts. Seems a bit unfair. But really, how much was a talent back in those days? A talent was actually the largest unit of Greek money. It was about 10,000 denarii. And one of those was about one day's pay. So basically, one talent was about 35 years worth of income for the average person back in the day. So in today's day, we're talking about like one and a half million bucks for someone making 40K over 35 years. It ain't chump change, it was a lot of money. So what does this all mean? It means that none of them were lacking in resources. They each got way more than enough. Second, did you notice that the master doesn't make it a competition? It's not like he wants them to fight each other, have competition, winner takes all. You don't see any of that. You don't see any hints of grumbling or jealousy. In fact, the first two didn't waste any time getting to work. They head out immediately to put their talents to use. That's what uh, the Bible says, immediately. Uh, they end up doubling their resources. But what does the third do? Again, it says he was afraid. So he ended up burying his talent. He doesn't do a single thing with it. Now, here's where it gets even more interesting. When the master returns, the third servant pretty much tells him, I didn't do anything with the talent you gave me because you're a tough and unfair master. I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much the gist of it. So in other words, he puts the blame on the master. So the master basically says, well, if that's what you really thought of me, you would have done something about it. If basically, if what you're saying is true, that I'm a tough and unfair master, I'm a hard master, 
then you should have known that I wouldn't be happy with the result. Instead, let's be honest, you got lazy. You got lazy. And not only that, you're making excuses. And really, on top of that, it's even way more than that, you're even blaming me for it. Wow. So what's the takeaway from all of this? Maybe you're like the one talent servant, the third servant. You're always telling yourself a story, why you couldn't do something, why you can't do something right now. Are you, are you always complaining, always comparing, always playing the what if game? Only if, what if, only if my parents were rich, only if I had uh, better genetics, only if I had more time, only if I were more smarter. So maybe you want any of those, of those things. Maybe you want the smartest. Maybe you want the most athletic, the most skilled. Yeah, maybe you're legitimately very busy. But let's be honest, you're not the only busy person out there. There's always people out there doing far more, accomplishing far more with far less than you. Everyone's born into different circumstances, and that's life, isn't it? That's life. Uh, like the story says, the master gave the, to each of them according to his or her ability. That means that whatever your purpose is in life, you have the ability to fulfill them. Not only do you have the ability to use the, the gifts and talents that you were given, but you have the ability to grow them. So stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop making excuses. And stop, let's stop comparing yourself to other people. I get it. I, I get it. Sometimes it's really difficult. It's automatic. But one thing you can do is not stew in it, in all the self-pity and the self-doubt. Um, you can do so much only if you give yourself the chance. Don't be afraid. Believe. Believe that you were given enough, enough for your abilities. Don't waste another single moment. Come on, you got this. Let's do this. You got it.